Let's do it, folks. I know you missed those sounds from Leon Chang, Noodle Cove right there. You missed it. I missed you. Uh, last week, I had some uh, child care conflicts, had to bail. Um, I was showing my kids all the fun Desmo stuff I would have shown you. And you know what? I just didn't appreciate it like you do. And so I've been missing you folks. I know you've been missing me. And uh, I'm so excited that we have a couple of first timers to the stream here on Desmos Live. Fun math every week-ish at 4 p.m. Pacific. So we got um, Maya and Corey here joining us from Desmos HQ. Uh, tell us uh, where you're currently broadcasting from and what it is you folks do around Desmos. Maya, tell them, would you? Yeah, so I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm based in Troy, New York, uh, and I'm a software engineer. I've been working here for about nine months or so. Um, and later, I hope to show you some new exciting features I've been working on. Um, yeah. We'll leave that there. We'll leave the new exciting features there just a little bit, drive the anticipation up a little bit. Uh, Corey, tell them where you're from and uh, what you're up to at Desmos. Yeah, I am based in San Francisco. I've worked at Desmos for almost five years now and currently am a product manager focused on kind of deciding what we're going to work on next and deciding kind of direction of our products. Yeah, you came on, uh, I remember your interview process, a random bit where you were um, at a teacher meeting, like if I recall right, you attended like a, a teacher meeting uh, that was like out of the usual interview scope, um, but you were there and I think a future employee, Zach Miller was there, maybe Shira helped also, <laughs> future employees, um, colleagues, and I thought that was really cool that you like tuned into kind of what the crowd was doing as part of uh, your process, that rocked. So happy you're here. And uh, to get started here, I would love to share with everyone the top 10 tabs for the week. Just some really fun stuff that I was seeing online I thought you should see too. So check this out right here. Top 10 countdown starting right now. Uh, Ms. Pascal, uh, just love this right here. She's um, trying out computation layer for the first time. Very excited, just went for it. And I just, I loved that this, uh, that she used initial text as a sync in the text input component. As, as her first. I just think it's a really simple, really powerful, really cool move uh, to create some sentence stems here. If you want, want to try computation layer, just go to the computation layer uh, gearbox for a text input component, type in initial text, colon right there, quote, and then some stuff and see what happens when you press preview. And there's this like sense of power that I feel like maybe both Maya and Corey and your work as, as engineers, like typing code in and watching cool things happen on screen might relate to this right here. I, I love seeing that right there. So um, number, that was number 10. Number nine is uh, Katie Bookbinder, who has um, been a feature in the top 10 tabs in the past, um, took Jay Chow's uh, dynamic notes uh, tutorial and turned that into a workshop out there. And I think uh, Henrico's in Virginia, maybe. Anyway, love it, way to go, we're proud of you. Uh, you're part of the Desmos Live team now. Um, uh, Abby here, I, I don't know if I've met Abby before, as, uh, but I love what she's up to here with um, this activity, Mystery Box, I had to click on it with a name like Mystery Box, my word. Um, and here is, uh, it's a two screen activity, and it's got um, uh, just what it says on the tin, it's got a box, and asks, uh, what's a, a function that's congruent to the, to the graph of y equals two squared? Number one, love congruency as applied to functions. Not in my usual mathematical uh, language here. Um, Maya or Corey, uh, how about it? A, um, a function that's congruent to the graph of y equals two x squared. What you got for me? Oh man, that's been a long time. <laughs> I'm gonna start with y equals and we'll go from there. Yeah, you got this. That's, that's my contribution. <laughs> <laughs> What's the crowd got for me here? Y equals two x squared. I mean, I'm, I might just like type, type in y equals two x squared because uh, I'm a kid right now. I don't know. Clue two says uh, it has an axis of right. symmetry at x equals three. And now I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, y equals, what is it? X plus three squared. I uh, bet a lot of kids are going to go there. Um, so it's tempting. And a range of y greater than or equal to five. I, I dig this like clue structure here. I haven't seen like multiple. Uh, action buttons using this way. Last one there. Oh, we got animation. Suzanne Von, Von Oy's uh, feeling a little tingle right there. Uh, nice work there from Suzanne, uh, Suzanne Influence. And then on the next screen here, it's like, uh, it shows me, this is where I love the feedback, where it's not just like, I mean, it's not telling me I'm, I'm right or wrong here ever. It's, uh, let's see here. It tells me the right answer right here. But I dig that as feedback, it shows me the right answer and my answer and lets me think about like if it doesn't match explain why that might be anyway like it's it's just really thoughtful work here i really dig it show some love in the in the comments in case abby's on the stream right now <clears throat> nice work abby 
Moving on. Have you folks followed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Alien here. I don't know, Alien, I'll just go with that. Um, Alien's got just such fantastic, like super prolific math art. Like, I don't know how this person, like every day it feels like post some time lapse of fractaline, you know, probabilistic trees, like just really fun stuff every day, all day. And I love this bit right here where this person's like um, posting uh, a zine, which I don't know, kind of like is a little bit before my time. And, but like you can you print this out on, on a half by 11 or a four or whatever and fold it up and just like leave it somewhere. And someone's got like something they can scribble on and uh, be mathematical with. All these links right here are in the show notes, along with a couple more um, bonus ones. I didn't have, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't cut entirely, but will not be on the stream right here. Um, Mark here posted these, which I said on Twitter I would frame any of these right here. I just think they're so beautiful. They use our reverse contrast mode in a really cool way, <laughs> right? Like, uh, I don't know, this one right here is using like line thickness too. I think. Here's my question is like, could you do this? How, like, how many expressions, how few expressions could one make this with? Like, I, I, could, I think I could do, I, I had to check in, uh, Mark graciously posted like one of the, one of the graphs. And I was like, cool, this is very cool. It's got just like zillions of these right here. I see that they're using lists to create like multiples quickly. But I just wondered, like it feels kind of semi, I don't know how to use our random feature as well as I wish I did. But I was just wondering if, if one could create this. Anyway, cool stuff right there. Okay, um, Trey, moving on to the last ones here. Trey right here offers us this really beautiful um, illustration of multiplication on the number line. I love this. Multiply by one, okay, it does this. Multiply by two and check it out. Like. Nice little mapping, just a very cool visual. Um, I love going to zero here and it's like schlunk, all of them, just like that. Just a fun visualization in my opinion. Play around with that, negative and they sweep on by each other. Just love the creativity of this community we got here. Awesome stuff. Sometimes it's a little too creative. Sometimes the creativity is a little creepy. It's like, uh, what? I mean, like you get the, um, the spider eyes right there. Uh, kind of like track around <laughs> the head. Anyway, this is just a, an amazing graph. Very cre creepy. Uh, Simon Lab right here. Great stuff. Again, in the show notes, check it out. Last ones here, folks. Last ones. Here they come. Um, this right here. What is going on here? Can you can you imagine it? Someone posted this in our internal Sweet, gra sweet Graphs channel on Slack and uh, people were <laughs> Like, wait, what is this? Is this a graph? Is this a video somehow embedded in the Desmos graphing calculator? Can you imagine the different pieces that are at play here? Here we go, check it out. We got the pieces, we got this this background. We got the um, the square, <laughs> we're blocking a, an actual TV right here. <laughs> I'm so glad there wasn't anything <laughs> awful on that when I, when I uh, removed the, the, the sensor box there, it could have been way worse. And then yeah, all that's going on here is you got this uh, this DVD icon and sliders. Anyway, slick throwback. Thank you, whoever that was, for that laugh. Um, last couple here, some real power user hours coming up here. We always have some folks from the Discord channel in the chat. Um, Discord, what is Discord? How do we describe Discord? I don't even know. Um, it's a giant, yeah, it's a giant, uh, uh, it's like a ball pit for children, only if the children know like just insane amounts of math and love technology and, um, should be supervised like really closely basically is how I think about Discord. Um, you might have your own definitions. I've never been in Discord. So this is all based on ignorance, not knowledge, but I bet I'm pretty close here. Anyway, that crowd, we got a very active Desmos Discord. Some of them are in the chat. Uh, say what's up if that's you. Um, let us know you have adult supervision nearby you. And they put together a Desmos wish list, which um, I saw and I interpreted it kind of as a like a, a Desmos demand list. Like these these folks scare me a little bit. Like I suspect that any <laughs> one of them could like zero out my bank account if they wanted to. Just like you know, they just have powers that are a bit beyond my comprehension. So I'm scared of them. So I'm, I, as Cor Corey is the um, you know is our product director here at Desmos, and so I offer these to Corey in particular as you know kind of like demands from our most enthusiastic users here. Uh, here we go. Here's the contributors list. Uh, the, or maybe co-conspirator list if this ever shows up in a court of law. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here. Anyway, some cool stuff here. So I just uh, kind of next uh, do what I can here, but can't do a ton. Anyway, lots of great stuff here. Lots of stuff I don't understand. Um, 
there's no reason you sh- sort shouldn't be able to. There's a there's an undercurrent of frustration with Desmos in some of this. Like, <laughs> you know, answer to this, Corey. Like, what, if quantile can sort, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to sort depending on the free variable x. You know, people are people are <laughs> frustrated here. Um, I love this right here. Allow allow us to access this code. We know it exists. We know it exists. <laughs> you know, buddy, I. I don't know this exists. I don't know what this thing is you're talking about. I type in this link. I'm pretty sure I've got like the right, you know, like login credentials to see stuff like that. And I'm not sure what they're talking about. Okay. So um, lots of this is just kind of gibberish to me. What's not, what's what's possible here, Corey? What can you do for these these people? Uh, yeah. So we we do take like user feature requests pretty pretty seriously here they they all kind of go into the um top of the funnel as it were in terms of figuring out what what we're going to work on next so i've i actually saw this list before before this moment and and have looked through it and making no promises uh but yeah Took it, in, right, Took it all very seriously, right? Took it all very seriously every okay. time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah, I love the the last two here. The last one is uh, uh, implement Slim Runners user scripts, <laughs> which I mean, cool. I just this is like, stand it here. You like throw random code into your browser and just say, hey, allow this to run, and uh, you know, which is risky enough. That's how my bank account gets zeroed out. I'm I'm on to you, folks. Um, but then they're like, do this across, just throw it into Desmos's servers. That sounds risky to me, but uh, I love it. And the very last one here is reopen the Desmos merch store, which has been closed for over a year now uh, uh, because yeah. it's not an essential service. If it was an essential service, I would reopen it personally so I could get vaccinated, but it's not, so it isn't. Anyway, thanks for that. And the very last one here is Robert Banks, who just like freaks me out. Like just, this is incredible to me. Um, Robert Banks, don't know who this person is, not on Twitter as far as I know, um, in our Facebook group periodically. Um, and just drop stuff like this, which is like, this, this guy's always like faking axes. Like he's, I feel like he's always just changing axes up so he can do bonkers stuff like this, showing how like Cartesian graphs, um, convert into polar graphs, um, with, with visualizations that just, uh, really freak me out. They're so cool. It turns into this like cylinder before the polar Anyway, that's a blast. Really fun to see all that. Fun to be with you folks. Let's move along here. You know why you're here. Um, and so we have a couple new features to offer you folks. The first one is one that's been released and the next two have not been released yet. They will be after this. Um, you can guess in the chat what that might be. You know, if you vote real hard in the chat, you know, maybe uh, Corey pulls some strings and makes that happen for you. Maybe not, I don't know. Um, Corey's gonna share with you a little bit about the first feature, which you uh, have seen already and is a response to particular user pain. Um, Corey, would you tell them uh, what the pain was that uh, this invitation code policy was meant to, meant to um, resolve? Yeah, this is an interesting case where this wasn't a direct uh, like feature request from users. This this was something that we saw in support emails and on Twitter, where there was just a lot of instances of this this pain of um, users, students uh, getting into classes or into. Um, activity sessions that didn't belong there. Um, so using our six character uh, codes that get you into activities or get you into classes, um, sometimes you can mistype and end up in the wrong place. And sometimes you, um, like that's that's the accidental version, but we've also heard of more nefarious versions where codes are shared on uh, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, Discord. and you're getting <laughs> Discord, uh, and, and students are, are entering a class that you didn't expect as a teacher and causing, causing issues in that way. Uh, and so what we were trying to address with, with this was, was kind of a lot of those underlying kind of user safety issues. Got it. Shall I share your screen here? You can uh, show them what we did. Sure. Yeah. Um, so over here in classes, um, so when you have a Desmos class, we give you this handy invitation code um, so that you can invite students to join that class. Um, previously, these had 
no expiration date. This six character code would exist pretty much forever. Um, and that was a security risk in, in all the ways that I just listed. Um, and so what we did is we added uh, expiration to, um, to these codes. Um, so you can see that this code expires on July 1st. It's just about the invitation code. Um, it's not about your class going away or anything like that. Um, this is about being able to use those six characters that you see on the screen there to join as a student. Um, we also gave the ability to teachers, did not have this before, to deactivate the code. So as soon as you see an issue in your class or in an in individual session, you can go ahead and deactivate that code. It's no longer able to be used to enter that class. Um, so we released this on Monday. I can go into a little bit of um, we the communication issues that we ran into. So uh, there was a lot of panic around kind of what does expiring mean? What, what goes away out. at this point? Uh, and so we did a lot of iteration over the past couple of days um, around the language that we're using here. And then also just we extended the, the expiration on all these classes <laughs> to be until July to give a little bit more peace of mind for, for the short term. Yeah, to me, I saw that too on Facebook. I jumped in real fast. I don't usually do that on Facebook to like try to put out fires if I could. And it spoke to me like how the, the kinds of pressure and stress and like precarity that teachers are under right now where you, you we all saw like all these ed tech companies offering freebies as soon as coronavirus hit like last year. And there, there was this worry that like, oh, this is it. Like we knew that Desmos was gonna like yank this out at some point and, and here is the date when it stops was how I was perceiving things a little bit because teachers are just like, they, they have like this, all, all, every teacher has this like very rickety, you know, like pile of materials and tools that they're using to just float by here. And so it was it was clear to me that we had like we needed to kind of change the wording on things. I was, I was super glad that uh, the choices you folks made sounded so solid that like, hey, uh, summertime is when anything will happen. Like no, nothing, even innocuous stuff. This is pretty innocuous. You can always like someone yeah. was like, are my activities going to get deleted that day? And it's like, no, nothing like this, that, that like we're not trying to like, yeah, this is all for you. Um, but to even make that moment be in the summer felt like a really good call uh, anyway. Cool stuff. This to me is in a category of product changes that we have made um, that I would label as like Desmos is growing up. Like our usage has gone up so much um, this last year, as you might imagine. People are depending on us more and more. We're the sort of thing that students might pass around a class link, like Des bombing. Some people are saying in, in the chat, like it's not on the level of yeah. Zoom bombing or even like Kahoot hacking. Like we're not that kind of scale, but we're like enough of a scale where like kids know, like I can. I, I might be able to mess with my teacher by like passing a code around. It feels like we're growing up a little bit and have to make some grown up decisions with that. And I'm glad that we have grown ups like Corey on the case and the team here at Desmos. <laughs> Thanks for the, the summary there. That's one feature um, that's been released. Uh, Maya's got features that haven't been released yet and they're a little bit happier, more fun um, than, mm -hmm. than, you know, like these kinds of security measures which feel very, very necessary. And our example of how we listen very carefully to um, folks that use our products. So Maya, what's uh, and it, the kinds of problems that you and your team you worked with are trying to solve um, in the development of this uh, still a mystery product? Um, well, I don't know if I can really talk about any of the difficulties without um, explicitly saying what the features are. <clears throat> Fair um, enough. Let's just jump into it. Let's, let's, let's uh, you know, let's, uh, how that is. let's uh, <laughs> get going here. <laughs> Image upload, tell them. Yeah. So I have an example activity in front of me to demonstrate how you might want to use image upload, which is a new feature coming directly after uh, this stream. So in this uh, example activity, we want to ask students to prove that this expression is equal to this expression. So, you know, me personally, I'm not very good with expressing myself um, with like words or just like typing out this answer. And the way I want to work through this is, well, let's say we have seven sevens on the top and three sevens on the bottom, and you kind of cross them out with division, and then you get four left. But I don't really know how to express that. You know, maybe I could try typing out all of these sevens, but this takes a long time. So what I did earlier was I wrote this down on paper because I'm much more um, comfortable with paper. Now I can just upload this image. 
So I can choose to upload an image that I've already um, taken and saved, or if I'm using a device like an iPad, or if I just want to use my you know, webcam that I use for Zoom, um, I can take a photo using my device's camera. But I'll just take the, uh, I'll, I'll upload an image since I already took it earlier. So first thing I see when I'm trying to upload this image is that my phone turned it sideways. And this is a problem a lot. You know, my phone doesn't know which way is up and down when I'm pointing it at a table. But we have this rotate button here. And even though I did this in purple ink, um, we can change it to uh, black and white. So it, the contrast is higher, and you can actually see what's going on. Um, so once you upload that, it's just in here with the rest of your text. And we'll say, um, we cross out the sevens, and we get four left. And you know uh, my words, but hopefully my teacher will understand what I'm saying. Uh, if I want to, I can delete this image. Um, I can look at it and make sure you know this is correct. Uh, but we'll say that's good and share it with the class. Um, and just like with you know uh, normal text, you can see oh this is what other students answered. So my doppelganger here, Maya two, has this stock photo of math and an uh, answer that looks suspiciously like mine, but it's probably nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. You know, hopefully this gives you an idea on uh, you know when you might want to use image upload, but really it's just useful for you know for anything. There's a million reasons why people might prefer writing. Uh, you know, your keyboard could be broken or, or what have you. Um, yeah, I love that example there, Maya. I, I think you like yeah, it's exactly the case <laughs> that like we want to be able to uh, their ideas in the right medium. Our our curriculum has like forty percent paper activities, and this is going to be such a game changer for I, I all the math. Connect. Uh, that's probably me. Probably me. All, all these kids in my neighborhood are on their Zoom school and whatnot, you know. Uh, but yeah, just the idea that our curriculum has forty percent, you know, of, of paper activities, and this will now help teachers, you know, experience their reasoning, their ideas, and the medium in which it was intended uh, for a lot of those. Uh, we got questions that are coming in. People are losing their minds in the chat. I love it. Even even the, the Discord folks who they bless them, they really want some broadcast, you know. Don't seize this moment to pick your nose. Hey, okay, um, okay. real quick, All Maya, right. over to you for our last feature. <laughs> yeah, I'll just skip uh, to the end. So our last feature, oops, I'm in the dashboard. Our last feature is um, <laughs> uh, text on sketch. So uh, something you'll see a lot is, you know, people trying to write on sketches because um, it's, a, it's a really diverse um, component. But it's it's kind of hard to to write with your mouse. Like I'm I'm kind of struggling with this now, even though I I kind of do this a lot. Um, so to fix this problem, we allow you to write either text or math on a sketch um, with these new tools up here. And once you select it, you just click on the sketch where you want to type, and then you can write just like you would anywhere else um, in our system. Oops. Um, and once you've uh, you know typed something out, you can drag it around. Um, you know you could delete it. You can change the uh, text size and the color so it can match your beautiful drawings that you have. Um, you can really just add a whole lot here. Um, but this definitely has uh, much less you know inter new interface options. Um, uh, but some exciting parts about this is that it's fully keyboard accessible. So to get a full list of the keyboard uh, shortcuts, go to desmos.com slash accessibility. Um, but I know them. And if I hit you know, Control Shift X, I can make a new text box uh, on the top left. And I can even you know, move it around with arrow keys or whatever um, and, and just have stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like a lot um, of uh, a lot of platforms yeah. have text on Sketch. I think we're like a little bit later than some to get that. But I love that we took our time and uh, you know we had Steve, our accessibility engineer, just like give this thing, I know very little about it, but give this thing a really sharp, you know, going over, making sure it's accessible to as many learners as possible. Love that so much. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll leave this here before all the kids in the neighborhood or maybe the Discord um, folks decide to take down our stream again. Um, but again, what this is all about is not tech for its own sake, but tech that um, either in the case of of codes like understands the reality of classes in which you folks are working and in the case of photo upload and text on sketch um, says we love math way more than technology and we want we want um, the technology to fade into the background and to become invisible and just support 
students and expressing their mathematical brilliance. And it's uh, just a real treat to get to demo this stuff with you folks on the stream. Maya and Corey, love your work, love what you're doing for students. I hope you've been seeing folks in the chat going berserk over all this. Um, these are coming out to you folks. Like when you wake up tomorrow, they will be there ready to roll. So um, been great to hang out with you folks. I'm going to hop off while we're uh, still buffering. All right. Take care, folks. See you next week. Bye now. <laughs> Where's the theme song?